The Dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, 
having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and domination, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he's put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus Christ, 
according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you, and all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of Christ. I would love to invite any children, youth, young at heart, to come forward. I'm going to be telling a story on the ground. It is going to be projected up there, so you will have a good view even if you're at the back. But if you would like to come forward, I would love, I would love for you to. Hey, Lachlan. Today, we're celebrating All Saints Day. There are a lot of saints in our church. Maybe you have a favorite saint. Sometimes it's a saint that we share a birthday with, or maybe whose name we share. Saints are people who have come close to God, taken risks, and helped 
their fellow human in a way that shows such a great love. And so today we, we celebrate them, we remember them. They help us to understand the diversity of ways that people can encounter God and be changed by God. And they help us, right? They inspire us to live into all of our callings to be saints of God. I want to start with a prayer. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Help us follow the example of your saints and shine your light out into the world. I want to tell you a story. It's a story from a long time ago. It's one of my favorites, actually, about a family that came so close to God, that took risks, and that learned something really important about God. <coughs> This is the desert. So many wonderful and important things happen to the people of God that we need a little bit of the desert here with us. The desert is a dangerous place. In the day, it's so hot that the sun scorches your skin. And at night, it's bitter cold. The desert is always moving. And when the wind blows, the shape of the desert changes, and people lose their way. There's very little to drink in the desert, and almost nothing grows for food. The desert is a dangerous place. People don't go into the desert unless they have to. When the flood was over, the creatures went out into all the corners of the earth to fill it with life again. Often, they gathered along the rivers first in little villages, and then in cities. One of the most ancient and greatest cities was called Ur. In the city of Ur, people believed in many gods. There was a god for every rock and flower. There was a god of the sky and of the earth. The world was alive with gods. But there was one family that believed that all of God 
was everywhere. Abram and Sarai were part of that family. When the time came for them to move to a new place, they did not know if God would be there, and so they wondered what it would be like. They started their journey. They traveled with their sheep, their donkeys, many helpers. The old people and the children came too. They slept in tents in the night, and in the day, they traveled along the river, the great Euphrates. It showed them the way and gave them and all of their animals water to drink. It was a long journey. But finally, they saw people coming out from Haran, and they knew that the journey was almost over. And then they were there. Sometimes, Abram would go out into the edge of the desert and look out into the sky, and he would come so close to God, and God would come so close to him that he knew what God wanted him to do. He wanted him and Sarai to move on again. And so they left Haran, and they continued west, out into the desert. They brought some animals, some sheep, some helpers. But this time, there was no river to show them the way or to give them and their animals water to drink. Finally, they came to a place called Shechem. Abram prayed, and God was there. And so he built an altar to mark the place. And then they continued. They came to a place near Bethel, and Abram prayed, and God was there too, and so he built an altar to mark the place. God was not just here, or here, or here, but all of God was everywhere. And finally, they came to Hebron, and they made their home by the oaks of Mamre. One day, Abram went out into the desert. God came so close to Abram and Abram came so close to God that he knew what God was saying. 
you will be the father of a great family. And Sarai will be the mother. And that family will be as many as the stars in the sky and as the grains of sand in the desert. It sounded impossible. Abram was so old. But God told him to change his name anyway. So Abram was to become Abraham and Sarai, Sarah. One day, strangers came out from the desert. Abram was sitting by his tent and he invited them to come in. Sarah mixed three measures of flour, which is a lot, and she offered him bread, she offered them bread and meat and water and milk to drink, as was their custom. The three strangers told Abraham that he would have a son, that him and Sarah would have a son. And Abraham laughed. He was too old. Sarah was standing by the tent and she laughed too. The strangers went on their way. Yeah. And do you know what happened? They had a son. They laughed again. And so they called their baby laughter. And in their language, in Hebrew, the word for laughter is Isaac. Isaac grew up. And when Isaac was grown, Sarah, so old, died. And they buried her in a cave. by the oaks of Mamre. Abraham was so lonely. He missed Sarah very much. But he knew that there was one thing he had to do. So he sent his most trusted helper, Eliezer, back to the land of his people to find a wife for Isaac. And when Eliezer arrived, he stopped by a well and met a woman named Rebecca. And she offered him water to drink and water for all of his animals. She invited him to her home. And he told her and her family about this great family. And Rebecca, she was as kind as she was courageous. And she decided that she wanted to be a part of that family. And so together, they walked across the desert. And Isaac came out to meet them. And Isaac and Rebecca were married. And now Abraham so old and full of years, died and was buried next to Sarah in a cave by the oaks of Mamre. Isaac and Rebecca had children and their children had children, and their children had children. This went on for thousands of years until your grandparents had children, and your parents had children, and now you are a part of that great family that is as many as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand in the desert.
Now I wonder, I wonder which part of this story you liked the best. And you can think about it, or you can say it out loud. I wonder which part of the story you think is the most important. Hmm. Which part of this story is about you? Where do you see yourself in this story? Is there any part of the story we could leave out and still have all the story that we need? I'll leave you to wonder about those. Thank you. Recognizing that we are God's saints, flawed and distracted though we may be, we come with humility before God this morning as this holy community of saints, seeking strength and consolation for our ongoing journey. Lord, enlighten our hearts. Lord of love, let us never cease to give thanks for all the saints, those beloved followers of Jesus, among whom we hope to be found, who work tire tirelessly to bring God's kingdom closer. We thank you for those among us who seek justice, the peacemakers, the visionaries, and advocates, those that bring help to the marginalized and vulnerable, those who work in education, health care, shelters, and social agencies. Those who work with love and integrity in all areas of society. We each can think of many saints for whom we give thanks this morning. Lord, enlighten our hearts. God of compassion, we pray that as your church in the world, regardless of where we live and serve, we may always understand ourselves to be your saints, set apart by your spirit, called to serve the poor, the hungry, and the grieving, and loving those who make themselves enemies. Show us how to love one another and to encourage one another on the way. 
We pray especially for those called to leadership in the church around the world in these difficult times. We particularly bring before you our bishops, clergy, and lay leaders here in our parish, our diocese, and across Canada. With old structures crumbling and the new way forward still opaque, we pray for courage, vision, and perseverance for all these saints. Lord, enlighten our hearts. So we may know the hope to the of Lord, we pray for those who were elected to public office across Ontario in our municipal elections this week. We pray that all mayors, councillors, and trustees will be given the strength and courage to seek the good of all the people, to bring peace and just policies to all our communities. We pray for our political representatives at all levels of government, led by Doug, our Premier, Justin, our Prime Minister, Mary, our Governor General, and ask that their clear priority will always be the common good, and including in that good the well-being of the land. Lord, enlighten our hearts so we may know the hope to which you have called us. God of justice, as Canadians, as treaty people, we pray for the healing of the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in this country. Show us the hard way of justice and right relations, that our First Nations can flourish in ways that are true to their history and cultures and that we can live together in peace. Lord, enlighten our hearts, so we may know the hope to which you have called us. God of peace, the world is dangerously filled with war and conflict, resulting in death and suffering, widespread dislocation of whole peoples, oppression of the vulnerable, and economic inequality around the globe. Loving God, we need your wisdom and holy presence to know the way forward. Hear the cry of each of our hearts as we lament the hard realities on our hearts this morning and our longing for peace. Lord, enlighten our hearts so we may know the hope to which you have called us. God of creation, as this year's season, season of creation has ended, we pray continually for the wisdom and courage for, to increasingly understand ourselves as connected to the whole family of earth, dependent on the earth for our very life, and to consistently resist the powerful world views that would make us masters of the earth and invulnerable to her suffering. We each recall the insights we received and the personal commitments we have made to deepen our love and strengthen our resolve to protect her. Lord, enlighten our hearts. So we may know the hope in which you have called us. Compassionate God, there are those among us who are facing trials and difficulties, illness and bereavement. We ask that you use us and our community to bring comfort, help, and encouragement to those who are in distress. We pray for those who have died and for those who mourn their loss. Let us pray for those who are on our hearts today who need healing, comfort, and strength. Lord, enlighten our hearts so we may know the hope for which you have called us. Lord, you have promised to hear us when we lift our hearts to you in prayer. So we faithfully bring all these things to you in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Redeemer. Amen.
Beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
holy and mighty God, we give you thanks for the triumph of Christ in the lives of all his saints. Receive all we offer you this day, and help us, like them, to run our course with faith, that we may come to your eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. In the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we be many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Lord of hosts, we praise you for your glory reflected in your saints. May we who share at this table be filled with the joy of your eternal kingdom, where Jesus is Lord now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Before announcements this morning, I want to give a deep thank you to all of those who crafted and created this liturgy, who put heart and care and soul into making this a beautiful celebration of all saints, especially to Hillary for coming back and joining us and giving her our blessing. Thank you very much. Oh, we will bless her in a moment, of course, but before that, we have a couple of announcements. Stephen Allen. Good morning. I have an announcement from the Indigenous Solidarity Working Group. On Saturday, November 12th, 1 o'clock to 4.30 in the lower hall of this parish, we will be hosting Mapping the Ground We Stand On. It explores Indigenous presence and settler arrival on what we know as Canada, but what is known to many Indigenous people as Turtle Island. And this resource was developed by the Primus World Relief and Development Fund. It will be co-facilitated by Suzanne Rumsey, a member of staff with the Primus World Relief and Development Fund, along with Andrew and Esther Wesley, known to many of us in this parish. Suzanne was involved in developing this program and has led workshops across the country. This week's e-news has a link to register and those attending the workshop will be encouraged to wear masks. And by the way, November 6th to 12th is Treaties Recognition Week here in Ontario. So we are all treaty people. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Just a reminder that staying connected, our information sharing uh, event that we hold every month is happening at 2 p.m. on Zoom. Look forward to seeing you there for that. And now for Hillary's blessing, I see that uh, Luke and the whole family have arrived. So all come forward, please. And we're gonna do this blessing a little bit differently this morning. Yes, you will all have an opportunity to come forth and uh, lay on hands, but we especially want to honor Hillary's ministry in our midst by having children and youth come forward and actually do that blessing and they're going to provide some pauses in the midst of that so that we can give our thanks to Hillary and express our hopes uh, in her new life in Port Hope with her family. Are you gonna come forward too, Luke? <laughs> no, no pressure. Andrew, can you help us out? So kids and youth first, and then we can all come up, come in, and lay hands. All right, come on up. You can come around and...
you come up here as well. We are grateful for Hillary's work with youth and church school. In, her contributions include Zoom youth during the pandemic, tie-dyeing orange shirts, making comic panels, pageants and Bible stories done dramatically, the book club, movie screenings, choosing topics and themes of, for study in youth group, interesting crafts, making pancakes in youth group, the labyrinth series, street walks, making beeswax wraps, virtual hot cross bun baking, and finding online games and quizzes. We hope Hillary has the opportunity to share her May gifts in the future and her family that her family stays happy and healthy going forward and comes to visit us often. That is all. <laughs> and we pray in gratitude for Hillary's many gifts to our broader community as well. here at Redeemer. Hillary's friendship and mentorship while I was in the youth ministry apprenticeship program. For her creativity and kindness. For the light she shone. All this we pray in the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Spirit who gives life. Amen. 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 Has a few words for us. You want to come up? I'm oh, yeah, you're good. Okay. I just wanted to say such a heartfelt thank you. This has been a really special day, and I'm so glad to be here with you all. I have absolutely loved my time here at Redeemer. It's um, it's been so meaningful and interesting, and I just met the most wonderful people, all the way from, you know, under one-year-olds all the way through, and I loved my time with the young adults as well. Um, so I just, I'm grateful. I have a really grateful heart right now, and I'm, oh. <laughs> uh, And it means so much to me to be here, and I do hope that we can visit again soon. Thank you.
of Christ, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.